Alright, so in this video we are going to review uh, mole calculations. So if you remember, a mole is a unit that we use to count atoms. So if we have a dozen, we have 12 whatever that is. So a dozen donuts would be 12 donuts. If I had 12 or a dozen pencils, it would be 12 pencils. So one mole is equal to 6.02, that's a typo, times 10 to the 23rd atoms or molecules. So if I have one mole of a substance, that's going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or molecules or whatever it is that we're talking about. So if I have a whole mole of basketballs, that would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd basketballs. Now one mole is also equal to the atomic mass. So one mole is always going to be this many atoms or molecules, but you have to remember atoms and molecules are different sizes and weights. So one mole of aluminum would weigh about 27 grams. So 27 grams would be one mole, and that would also be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. If I have a mole of copper, that would be 12 grams. So if I go weigh 12 grams of copper, I have a mole of copper, which is also 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper. So if we are looking for the molar mass of a compound, we need to just add up the uh, mass of all of the atoms. So calcium nitrate would be, well, the mass of calcium would be about 40 grams plus the mass of two nitrogens. See, everything gets multiplied by two here, multiplied by the mass of nitrogen, which is 14, plus the mass of three oxygen atoms, or not three, six oxygen atoms, because everything gets multiplied by the two on the outside. So we get about 164 grams per mole. So if I go weigh 164 grams, I have one mole of calcium nitrate. So how many moles do I have if I have five grams of calcium nitrate? Well, I know the molar mass is 164. We just did that. So this is a conversion factor between grams and moles. So if I have 164 grams, that's equal to one mole. So if I have grams, I have five grams here, and I need to convert that to moles, well, I'll use my molar mass as my conversion factor because one mole is equal to 164 grams. Grams goes on the bottom to get rid of it, moles goes on the top because that's what we want. Top has to equal the bottom. So it's just five divided by 164, which gives me 0 0.03 moles. All right, so these are our mole conversion factors. So one mole is gonna be equal to the molar mass of that substance, which will be different for every substance. One mole is also equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. That could be ions, molecules, atoms, whatever it is that you're talking about. And for gases only, be very careful about this, gases only, one mole is equal to 22.4 liters at STP, standard temperature and pressure, so zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure. Now, for solutions, um, you use your molarity. So if you have that big M right there, that means that you have two moles for every one liter. So DM cubed would be a liter. Same thing. So for solutions, we always use the molarity as the conversion factor between moles and liters of the solution. So be careful when we're dealing with liters because if it's a solution, you're looking at the molarity. If it's a gas, you might be looking at this 22.4 liters and that's equal to one mole, but only at STP. All right, so what's the mass of 6.29 times 10 to the 24th molecules of aluminum sulfate? So molecules, we'll just use MC for short for that. So I'm going from molecules and I wanna to go to grams. Well, I don't have a conversion factor that goes between molecules and grams, but I do know how many molecules are in a mole. And I do also know that I can go from moles to grams using the molar mass. And then this would be Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So I have 6.29 times 10 to the 24th molecules. 
So one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Now I can go to grams, so grams goes on the top, moles on the bottom. One mole is equal to, out for aluminum sulfate, Aluminum sulfate's formula is this, SO4. So the mass of aluminum sulfate is 342 grams because we add up the mass of two aluminum atoms, three sulfur atoms, and 12 oxygen atoms. So when I go through, do the calculation, I get a rather large number. I get 300 or 3,570 grams. All right, so how many liters of solution would you have if you have 0.5 moles per liter with 5 grams of sodium chloride? So we have two numbers here. We have a molarity and we have a mass. Molarities are conversion factors. So this is 0.5 moles, and that's equal to 1 liter of solution. So we can use this as our conversion factor, and we would start with the grams. We usually don't start with a conversion factor. So we have five grams. I'm gonna convert that into ultimately liters. So if I know that I have a conversion factor between liters and moles, I wanna get this into moles first. So one mole is equal to, for sodium chloride, that's gonna be about 58.5. That comes from the molar mass. And now I can go to liters. One liter is equal to 0.5 moles. So again, we're using our molarity as a conversion factor. And that's gonna give me 0.17 liters. So how many grams of carbon dioxide would I have if I have two decimeters cubed of the gas at STP? Remember, a decimeter cubed is a liter. So I have two liters, and I wanna to go to grams. So I'm going from liters to grams. I don't have a direct conversion factor between liters and grams. So this is a gas at STP. I do know how many liters are in a mole, and then once I'm in moles, I can use my molar mass to convert it into grams. So, I have 22.4 liters, and that's equal to one mole. And now I can go to grams, moles on the bottom. One mole is equal to 44 grams for carbon dioxide, so that's the mass of carbon dioxide, 12 plus the 32 for oxygen. So I'm gonna get 3.9 grams here. So if I have three milliliters of a 12 moles per liter solution of HCl, how many grams of HCl is this? Okay, so I, again, I have two numbers here. I have a volume and I have a molarity. The molarity is a conversion factor. 12 moles is equal to one liter here. So I'm gonna start with my milliliters and I wanna go to grams. Well, I don't have a direct conversion factor for that. So what I need to do is I need to get two moles because I know that I can convert my moles into grams, I just have to get it two moles first. So if I go to liters, then I can go to moles, then I can go to grams. Three milliliters, I go to liters, milliliters on the bottom because I need to get rid of it. Liters on the top, one liter is equal to a thousand milliliters. Now I can go to my moles. So 12 moles is equal to one liter for the molarity here. And now I can go to grams. One mole is equal to 36.5 grams for HCl. Remember, everything's gonna be different. This is the molar mass. So when I do this calculation, I get 1.3 grams.
All right, so I have a solution of sodium hydroxide that has a concentration of 8 g dm cubed to the negative third. Okay, so all this means right here is that it's grams per decimeter cubed or grams per liter. So anytime we have that negative exponent, it just means it's 1 over that thing. So it's 1 over decimeter cubed, so it's really just grams per decimeter cubed. So what's the concentration in moles per liter? So this is one of the very few times we'll actually just start with a conversion factor because we're trying to convert the grams into moles. So the decimeter cubed, we're going to leave that alone and we're just trying to convert the grams. So it's just going to be, I'm going to have grams on the bottom, moles on the top. One mole is equal to 40 grams. So 8 divided by 40, that would give me 0.2 moles per decimeter cubed, or moles per liter. So how many chloride ions do I have if I have one liter of a point, or of a two moles per liter solution of calcium chloride? So here we're trying to go to chloride ions um, and we have one liter of a two moles per liter solution. So remember, this is a conversion factor between moles of calcium chloride and liters of solution. So I want to go to chloride ions. So I want to go from this, I just want the chloride ions specifically. So remember, if I take this and I dissolve that into water, the ions separate. So I'm going to get one chloride or one calcium ion and two chlorides in the solution. So for every one of these, so every one of these I have, so one mole of calcium chloride, I have two moles of chloride. And you have to be careful because chloride, when it ends in I-D-E, it's talking about the ion, not chlorine gas, which is Cl2. Okay, so it's chloride, I-D-E, which is indicating that it's this. So it does not have a subscript of two. So I'm starting with liters. I want to go to ions, chloride ions. Well, I know I can go to moles of calcium chloride using the molarity. I also know that for every one mole of this, I'm going to have two moles of chloride ions. So I can go to moles of chloride ions, but it's asking for the number of ions. Well, for every one mole that I have, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd ions. So I'm going to use this process to do my conversion here. So I'm going to start with one liter. I'm going to go to moles of calcium chloride. Well, there's two moles for every one liter of solution. So for every one of the calcium chlorides, I have two moles of my chloride, but I'm not looking for moles of chloride, I'm looking for the ions. So for every one mole of ions that I have, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd ions. So when I do this calculation, I get 2.4 times 10 to the 24th ions. Okay, so if you're being asked for a specific atom or ion in a compound, make a conversion factor. So for every one calcium chloride I have, I have two chlorides. All right, so if I have one mole of water, how many molecules of water is that? Well, I know that one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So no math necessary for this. Well, for every one water, I also have one oxygen. So again, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of oxygen. Now atoms of hydrogen, well, I have two hydrogens for every one 
water. So I have double the amount of hydrogen, which would be 1.2 times 10 to the 24th. And then how many total atoms? Well, that would just be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of oxygen plus the 1.2 times 10 to the 24th atoms of hydrogen, which would be 1.806 times 10 to the 24th total atoms.